Today we're going to be talking about forensic DNA, but before we get into the forensics, we really need to hit some review on DNA and basic genetics because it's probably been a minute, maybe as long as your last living environment class, since you've really thought about DNA and what's going on with it. So let's start with our basics. DNA, um, where does it come from? So we're talking in the broadest sense here. Half of your DNA comes from your mother, half of your DNA comes from your father. Now we're talking about DNA, what is DNA really? Well, you've probably been told all your life that it's the blueprint of life, and that's kind of a simplification, but it's not wrong. It's the directions for everything that makes you, you, and everything that makes me, me, and everything that makes a banana, a banana, and everything that makes um, a cat, a cat, and a carrot, a carrot. You get the point. But how is DNA different among us? Because we know people say, oh, there's a DNA match. There have to be some differences. Well, the bottom line is there are many more commonalities in our DNA than differences. It's much more common than it is different. About 99% of the DNA in a human goes for just literally the raw ingredients that go in to make our muscles and our eyes and our blood the things that make us function. And we all need those things. So we all have those same instructions. It's the tiny little differences that make you different from your siblings or um, your friends different from their parents. We have these individual traits that do get inherited. Now, the word DNA, what does that even stand for? Well, get ready, it's a mouthful. It's deoxyribonucleic acid. Try saying that three times fast. No, seriously, don't. Let, let's talk about how that breaks down. So DNA, first, deoxyribo. D means without. Oxy, oxygen. Ribo, ribo refers specifically to ribose. It's a sugar. So deoxyribose is a ribose sugar without oxygen in it. And this is the sugar that makes up one part of a nucleotide and the nucleotides are the little individual building blocks of DNA that we'll talk about in a minute. The word nucleic, now that simply refers to the fact they discovered DNA in the nucleus. That's the first place that it was found. It's not the only place DNA is, but it's the first place where it was found. And then acid refers to the fact that there is an organic acid functional group on DNA. And if you've taken chemistry or organic chemistry, that should sound familiar to you. Now, where can we find DNA? Well, DNA is largely found in your cells. And it doesn't matter what type of cell it is, blood, hair, saliva, sweat, um, semen from a crime scene, various body tissues, they're all going to have the exact same DNA in them. Now, it doesn't mean that the DNA is expressed in the same way because certain things will get turned on, other things will get turned off in order to make those distinctive individual cell types. But each cell contains like the full set of instructions for how to build a person. It's just not all those instructions are being used at any given time. Now, most of the time we think about DNA being in the nucleus of cells, and that's true, but that's not the only DNA we find. There are other types of DNA found in a cell. So if we think about our nucleus as that red blob in the center, all these little yellow rings that I'm showing you outside, those are not nuclear DNA. Here's our nuclear DNA, and all of these little rings are mitochondrial DNA. Now, mitochondrial DNA is extra special. I'm gonna to talk to you about why this is gonna be really important to us in terms of our investigations. Number one, mitochondrial DNA is only inherited from your mother. I'm sorry, I'm not being sexist. You're not getting it from your dad because the mito mitochondrial DNA you get from your mom those are every single one of them exact copies of the mitochondrial DNA that was in the mitochondria in the egg cell that got fertilized when you were a zygote. It's crazy to think about. Every mitochondrial DNA you have is a carbon copy of the mitochondrial DNA your mother gave to you in her egg cells. 
okay? Now, you've got more than one copy of your mitochondrial DNA in every cell because you've got lots of mitochondria. For some reason, I do not understand. Students that have taken biology or living environment, literally the one thing you remember is what? That mighty, mighty mitochondria. And the mitochondria is the, yeah, the powerhouse of the cell. And you have many of them in each individual cell and each one of them has its own copy of mitochondrial DNA. So that's the first thing that's special about it. Second thing that's special about it is that it's ring shaped. Now that ring shape is kind of awesome because the circle is actually the strongest shape in nature. And because the mitochondrial DNA is circular, it doesn't degrade as quickly as other forms of DNA. It makes it much more stable. And because you have lots of copies of it, you tend to have it hang around longer than your nuclear DNA. We're gonna come back to this when we're talking about genetic testing. So let's go to the nucleus. Specifically in the nucleus, your DNA is in the form of chromosomes. Now you've got 46 chromosomes, 23 from your mom, 23 from your dad, and they each come in pairs, and they have maternal chromosomes and paternal chromosomes, and these are all perfectly matched except for your um, sex chromosomes, and those are your X and your Y chromosomes that determine your biological gender. Now within those chromosomes, your DNA is wound up in little coils, and it's wound up on these things called histones, it's almost like if you imagine you had a rope and you twisted it and twisted it and twisted it and twisted it, eventually it would coil back in on, it, on itself and that's what your DNA does in order to package into your chromosomes. Now, you might remember your double helix. The question is, do you remember the names of the units or your nucleotides that form that double helix? So your double helix basically means it's a double-stranded molecule. It's made of four nitrogenous bases, or nucleotides. Take a second, see if you remember them. Yep, those are adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. And they all bond in a very specific way. Adenine can only bond to thymine. Guanine can only bond to cytosine. And this means that it allows us to have something called semi-conservative replication which means if A can only ever attach to T, we can cut a piece of DNA in half and use each half to make a perfect copy of itself using the original strand as a pattern. And that's where we're gonna go to next when we start talking about uses of biological evidence, uses for DNA, and how we can generate copies in order to analyze them forensically.